Welcome to the Small Business Coffee Break, the series where we take a few minutes to work on your business, not just in it. Today we talk with Alex Barthet of the Barthet Construction Law Firm about what happens when your business gets sued. Alex has over 13 years of experience helping contractors and construction businesses all over the state of Florida. So grab a cup of coffee and let's get into it. We've talked about some things that are, you know, preventative, right? And unfortunately, sometimes though, we do find ourselves in that position, right? So now I've been sued. What happens next? So I find that there's two types of people, the people that have been sued and they understand. And then there's the people that haven't been sued yet. And they're tremendously nervous. They don't understand the process. And at least understanding the process will make it less intimidating. So if you get sued, you know, what happens? How does it work? Um, so what's interesting is that in this market, if you are named in a lawsuit, much more likely than not, the first way you're going to find out that you were named in the lawsuit, if you weren't already in some kind of back and forth uh, letter writing campaign with the other side or their lawyers, is that you will likely get a letter an email, text message, or a phone call as a solicitation from a lawyer that says, we just wanted to let you know you've been sued. You should call us because we can represent you. Those get to you faster than the it's actual lawsuit. It's shocking. <laughs> I just was hired by a client yesterday who says, I've been sued. I, I don't know where it is. I don't know how it works, but I got a text message that said that I've been sued um, and it was from a, a lawyer soliciting work. So the first thing is you may get that. My advice is be happy that you now know, but absolutely positively do not hire the person that reached out to you. <laughs> okay. Go to a trusted advisor, get a referral, go onto Google, do a search for someone that is specialized in that area of law, whether it's a personal injury case, a real estate case, a construction case, you want, a, you want an expert um, in the area to represent you. Um, so once you kind of figure out what's going on, at some point you're gonna get served and either the sheriff or the pro a process server is gonna show up and hand you some papers. If you have a registered agent, that's a company or someone else, maybe a lawyer that set up the company, they are gonna get served, not you, and then they will forward it to you. Um, the moment that happens, you now have 20 days to respond, which means that in that period of time, assuming you are a business, you have to be represented by a lawyer. The, the rules of the court require that you are represented by an attorney if you are a business. Um, for any case, valued at greater than $8,000. So anything outside of small claims court, you okay. have to have a lawyer. So if it's less than 8,000 and you're in small claims court, you can represent yourself if you wanted to. Um, and many times, quite frankly, when clients or prospects call us and it's in that small claims court, um, we send them to our podcast uh, or to our YouTube channel where we have a little tutorial on how to deal with a small claims, small claims case. Wow. Um, because it's just, it's, it's a simple process, it's a streamlined process, you know, it doesn't make sense to pay a lawyer many thousands of dollars if the dispute is over $2,500. Right, right, not that many thousands of dollars. Correct. But assuming you have to hire a lawyer, that lawyer needs to file a response within 20 days. And that response could be, I just need more time. And that's acceptable in most instances. Um, so you've been served, you have looked for a lawyer, you have found a lawyer you're comfortable with, you've signed his or her engagement agreement, you may have had to pay a retainer. The other thing to do is either send it to your insurance agent because maybe it's a covered claim. Mm -hmm. um, always send it to your always send yes. it to your insurance agent, whether you think it is or isn't. And even if they tell you it's not, yes, I agree with you. The worst thing that happens is that they come back and they say, no, nope, no. it's not covered. Right. Um, and a good lawyer who, who you hire will likely tell you, send it to your insurance agent, send it to the, your insurance company, make a claim, 
because maybe this is covered. Right. Um, so if it's covered, your insurance company is more likely than not going to designate a lawyer to defend you on their nickel. Right. You won't have to pay. Mm -hmm. Now that defense may be under a reservation of rights. It may not be complete and unequivocal. Maybe they have a right later to change their mind, but most of the time they will hire a lawyer if it's covered, that lawyer will defend you. And then, you know, you'll be represented by a competent lawyer that has been screened by the insurance company, paid by the insurance company. And then that lawyer will shepherd you through the process and explain how it all works. Um, if it's not covered, uh, maybe it's a simple breach of contract case. Maybe someone claims that you owe them $50,000. Uh, that's not going to be covered by your insurance because there's no insurance for that. Right. It's just a contract dispute. Um, so once you get served with a complaint, you now have to hire a lawyer and that lawyer may file a counterclaim, but will likely file an answer in affirmative defenses. Here's why we are not responsible. And then the case will likely go on from six to 18 months. And in the vast majority of that period of time, discovery is going to happen. And discovery is the exchange of written questions that need to be answered, the exchange of uh, documents that need to be exchanged and depositions where you come now it's all via zoom but you will show up raise your right hand there's a court reporter the other side asks you questions you have your lawyer has the right to ask the other side questions it's a fact gathering period of time in that period of time there may be what are called motions with the court where people try to explain things to the judge to have the judge make different rulings on different issues but the ultimate trial kind of where everything comes together is likely going to be 12 to 18 months from when you were originally sued. sued. Um, that's the trial. That's what you understand from law and order, right. uh, Perry Mason, whatever it is, whatever might, might be a judge only might, there may be a jury. Yeah, correct. You know, it, it, it's, it's, I, well, I'm, I like to go to jury duty. I'm one of the people who tries not to get out of it. Because, well, I, you know, I want competent people, God forbid. You never know when you're on the other side of that conversation. Uh, and, and so, you know, there it gets a little... And it, those are very formal and very scary. And sometimes, you know, depositions, yeah, um, you know, can be intimidating. Uh, intimidating. Absolutely. Let's keep the conversation going. If you have any questions you'd like to ask Alex, ask him in the comments or his contact information is in the description. If you have any questions you'd like me to ask Alex or any other professional in their field, my contact information is also in the description and I'm always available via DM. See you next week for another cup of coffee and more questions answered.